I bought an old house with a nice big plot of land to raise pigs and chickens. My land is big enough for my wife and my mother to farm as well. I rented three parts of my land to three Hmong men who like to raise chickens for big games. They each pay me $60 a month to use that land. $60 a month is good money back in the day. As I started having more and more animals, I spent a lot of money fencing my big backyard to protect them from coyotes. That area has lots of coyotes. Some nights when I'm out late in my backyard, I can hear those coyotes running outside the dead brush. It's dark and hard to see them. But every time I flash my light at them, I can see those glowing yellow eyes looking back at me. There is a reason I don't keep a dog. It doesn't matter how big the dog is, he is no match for a pack of coyotes. Dogs can be stupid and impulsive. Once they decide to chase a coyote, the coyote will lead them to the pack and the dog will get torn apart. I asked my Mexican neighbor, Juan, who lives two miles away, about the coyote problem. He told me that they always have coyote problems. He said that coyotes usually come out at night to look for food and start hunting for food again towards the morning before they go back to sleep. He told me that he and his son would go hunt for coyotes early in the morning, around 4 or 5 a.m. I asked him if I would get in trouble if I killed a coyote. He said, according to California law, you can kill coyotes. Coyotes are like pigeons and rats. You can kill them and throw them away. One early morning, my wife woke me up and told me that something was attacking my goats and for me to go check. When my wife said that, I could hear one of my goats screaming. I got up, grabbed my shotgun, and ran outside in my shorts. I could see blood on the dirt. I followed the blood to the fence and saw that the coyotes had dug a big hole underneath my chain link fence. I could see some blood and hair stuck on the fence. I stopped there, it was still too early, and the sun was not even up yet. I slid a board under the fence to block the hole so the coyote couldn't come back inside. Then I went to check on my goats and realized that the female goat that had just given birth to two babies was gone. The two baby goats were okay though. When the sun rose, I grabbed my hunting rifle and opened the gate to the outside. I started tracking to see where the coyote could be taken my female goat. I followed the trail and came to a spot with some tall brown grass and saw blood everywhere with some animal hairs. It looked like she was eaten by a pack of coyotes on that spot. I just stood there and looked at the bloody grass. If it was any other goat, I would have been okay and just let it go. Considering that I live in coyote land, I could accept losing one of my goats, but I couldn't believe that it was the female goat who had just given birth to two baby goats. I decided to look around the area to find where the coyote hideouts were. There had to be some hideouts because there were so many of them. I kept walking and heard what sounded like a creek because I could hear water flowing. When I got closer to the creek, I saw an old pink and dirty mattress on the side of the creek. The water level where I'm at is very shallow. I crossed the rocky creek to the other side. After walking around looking for coyote hideouts, I saw something moving underneath a shaded tree. Underneath that tree was a dry log. I could see something moving. I thought it was probably squirrels. But when I got closer, I saw a mother coyote jump out, run a bit farther, and look back at me. I aimed at the mother coyote, but something caught my eye. Underneath the tree next to the dry log were three coyote pups. I put my rifle down and walked closer to the three coyote pups. When I got closer, the mother coyote ran towards me, but turned and backed away. I figured I'd mess with the three pups to get the mother to come closer. One pup actually ran towards me and started chewing on my boot. I started touching that pup with the tip of my rifle, and the mother came a bit closer. I quickly turned my rifle at the mother and pulled the trigger. The mother ran a few steps and dropped to the ground. She was breathing heavily. I was still mad that they had killed my female goat, 
so I walked over to the mother coyote, aimed at her head, and finished her off. I left her dead body there and walked back. I didn't care to turn and look at the pups. After that event, strange things started happening. My mother started to get sick. But then, she was already old. Even though I'm only 40 years old, my mother was already in her late 60s. I'm the only son, so she stayed with me. At first, I didn't think much of it. I thought her sickness was due to old age. One night, I was out checking on all the pigs, chickens, and goats. I wanted to make sure that everything was still okay. That's when I heard what sounded like a pack of coyotes running around outside. I flashed my light at it, but there was nothing. Not a single animal in sight. The tall grass was still, and the wind was calm that night. I was about to walk back, and then I heard it. A voice called my name. Bang Su. Bang Su. I flashed my light again, but there was nothing outside the fence. I thought I was just hearing things, so I went back inside our house. The second night the same thing happened. I made sure that all the animals were locked away and that there were no holes underneath my fence. I flashed my light outside and there was nothing. No coyotes, no animals. It was another calm night. I was starting to walk back to my house and then again, Fang Su, Fang Su. This voice sounded a lot like my mother. I turned back and flashed my light, but there was nothing. I went back inside to check on my old mother, but she was already asleep. When my mother was still walking around, she kept bumping her toes on the base of the bed frame, so we put the bed frame up in her closet. She was just sleeping on the mattress without the frame. When I saw that she was sleeping, I closed the door and went to bed with my wife. The next two nights, I didn't hear anything. No coyotes, no wind. I would lock the animals away, make sure there were no holes underneath the fence, and then go to bed. Then one night at 5 a.m., my wife woke me up again. She said, Honey, sounds like something is attacking or scaring our animals. Once I was awake, I could hear one of the goats screaming and calling. I got up in my pajamas and white t-shirt, grabbed my hunting rifle out of the closet, and ran outside. I could hear the crying of my goat getting further and further away. I didn't need to check to see if there was any hole underneath my fence. I knew those coyotes probably dug a big hole again. I opened the gate to the outside and then closed it. I ran after the screaming of my goat. I fired a few shots in the hope that the coyotes would get scared and let go of my goat. After I shot a few times, I could hear running water. I was close to the rocky creek again. This time, I could hear that the goat wasn't being dragged. The scream was calmer and was just coming from one spot. Maybe my shots scared the coyotes away, and maybe they left my goat by the creek. However, this time the goat sounded a little different. It didn't sound like a goat crying or screaming anymore. It sounded like a human. I slowly approached the sound. Part of me thought it sounded like a human, but part of me also thought that maybe when a goat is about to die, they sound like that. I continued to walk slowly, moving tall grasses out of the way. Then up ahead, I saw a person with long hair sitting on the dirty pink bed on the edge of the creek. That person was leaning towards one side. The person's skin looked yellow, and her long hair was blocking her face. She wore a black long sleeve shirt with blue stripes. Her shirt had buttons, but it was open, showing her stomach, and her breasts were drooping down. She was just sitting there like a drunk person. When I saw this, I just turned and power walked back home. When I got home, it was already dawn. Honestly, I had no idea what I saw at the creek. Maybe it was too early, and I was just seeing things. When I got back, I opened the gate and went back inside my yard. 
As the sun began to rise, I looked around my fence and saw no holes at all. I went to look at the goats, and their gate was still closed, and there were still seventeen goats with the two new baby goats. Not a single goat was missing. The one that was missing was the mother goat from the other day. I went to check on the chickens and pigs, and they were okay. That was so strange. I swear this morning my wife and I both heard what sounded like one of the goats being attacked. Then I thought to myself, maybe whatever was calling me for two nights was just trying to make me go outside. There were no coyotes for a few nights. When I thought that, I got a little scared. But I know that living in the countryside is bound to have strange things happen. I have a good business, so there's no way I'm going to stop my business because of a little scare. I went back inside to shower, and then after that, I sat on the couch watching TV and fell asleep. Before I knew it, my wife woke me up for breakfast. I got up to sit at the table, and then my wife told our two kids to go wake up their grandma. Our two kids ran to their grandma's room. After a few minutes, they came back and said, Mommy, Grandma is not waking up. My wife got up and walked to my mother's room. I was eating when I heard my wife crying and mourning. I got up and told my two kids to eat and stay there in the dining room. I told them not to come to the bedroom. I went to the bedroom and saw that my mother was already dead. Her skin was already pale and yellow. I guess she was foaming at the mouth when she was dying because she had dry saliva on her lips and cheeks. I called 911, then I called my two sisters and the relatives. When the cop and paramedics got there, they checked and confirmed that my mother had already died. According to the paramedics, my mother had already been dead for at least three hours. My mother has a lot of health issues. Therefore, we refused an autopsy. The police and paramedics said for us to call a funeral home and have someone take her there to be refrigerated once the nurse come and pronounce my mother's death. After that, the police and paramedics left. When my two sisters and the relatives got there, everyone cried and mourned the loss of my mother. The relatives told my two sisters to go look in the closet for her traditional funeral clothes so they could put them on her before she became stiff. One of my sisters went to my mother's closet and found the funeral clothes. The relatives raised my mother up to a sitting position on the side of the bed while they put her funeral clothes on. My mother's hair was dangling and blocking her face. Her skin looked very pale and yellowish. She was leaning towards one side, and her breasts were dangling down. The relatives got her shirt on, and it was a black shirt with buttons and blue stripes. Tears were running down my face. Not because I was sad, but because I was so scared. The thing I saw at the creek was a premonition of my mother's death. I asked myself, was the crying this morning a goat, or was it my mother? Did she cry in the house, but my wife and I thought it was a goat? That was so strange. Was her spirit the one that was calling my name a few nights ago? I had so many questions. After we got her all dressed up, we called a funeral home, and within 30 minutes they came and took her to the morgue. The relatives and I planned to do my mother's funeral in two weeks. A few days later, there was a knock at my door. I went to answer it, and it was my Mexican neighbor, Juan, from down the street. He told me that yesterday, he and his son went to hunt for coyotes in the field behind their house, and they saw a goat wandering the field. They brought the goat home and were wondering if it belonged to me. I told him that I did have a goat that went missing, a female goat. Juan told me that the goat they found was a black and white female goat and for me to go to his house later and see if it was mine. Later I drove down to Juan's house to look at the goat. Juan took me to his big backyard to see the goat. I couldn't believe it. It was my female goat that went missing. I thought she was dead and eaten by coyotes. Juan told me that my goat was lucky to be alive because there are a lot of coyotes out there. Then he said, Oh, by the way, 
I've heard some shots out there lately. Was that you? Were you out hunting coyotes too? I told him that I was out looking for my goat and had to shoot to scare a few coyotes away. Juan said, Make sure you don't shoot coyotes beyond that creek. There's a creek over there, and beyond that creek is a conservation area. There are some old native graves on the other side of the creek. If you shoot any animal on that side, you can get in trouble. The animals on the other side are being protected. I thanked Juan and brought my goat back home. I didn't ask him what he meant by the other side being protected. Protected by what? The law? Protected by the natives? All I know is that the coyote did not kill my female goat. But I did go over to the other side of the creek and killed a female coyote with three pups. I wonder if that had anything to do with my mother passing and leaving behind me and my two sisters. That's all for this video. Thank you for making all the way through and supporting my stories. Have a wonderful day or night.